It's a new year, so I've started a new Warhammer 40k army, and that army is Black Templars. So today I'm going to share with you my secrets to collecting Warhammer that have kept me obsessed with this hobby for over 20 years. If you're looking to start a new Warhammer 40k army, whether you're brand new to the hobby or a veteran hobbyist, this video will have something for you. This is a video about how to collect an army that excites you throughout the day, so you can't wait until you have a spare moment of hobby time to work on it. It's about fueling your passion and creativity for maximum enjoyment. Let's get to it. The first and most important thing to do is follow your inspiration. And inspiration can come from many different sources. This means taking stock of exactly what appeals to you about a certain army and leaning into it. We're lucky today to live in a world where inspiration is plentiful. Browsing on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, or many other places will show you a huge selection of amazing hobby projects and armies. When I got into this hobby as a kid, the only place that you could see other people's miniature projects and armies was at the local game store, or in magazines. I still have a lot of these old White Dwarf magazines today, and they remain a huge source of inspiration. In addition to pictures of cool models, they often feature beautiful illustrations. Going upstream from the models itself and looking at inspiration images from the talented illustrators and concept artists who have worked for Games Workshop over the years is a great way to get your creative juices flowing. It's impossible to look at Jess Goodwin's Eldar sketches or Carl Kopinski's work or Adrian Smith's larger than life portraits and not feel inspired to dive into the world of Warhammer with both feet. And there are tons of other legendary artists to browse. This is one of the reasons why on my Discord server for Patreon patrons, we have an inspiration images thread where we discuss artists and artwork. Speaking of which, if you want to support the channel and join our little growing community over there, follow the link to my Patreon page in the description below. One month of Patreon membership is the financial equivalent of about 5,000 views on YouTube AdSense, so it's a massive help to the channel. Without your guys' support, I wouldn't be able to make these videos. Recently, while working on some other content, I was going through this old White Dwarf magazine, and I started looking at the illustration on the front. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this piece, it's a group of Black Templars by John Blanche and it was on the cover of the old 3rd edition 40k box set and rulebook. Recently, Black Templars have been enjoying a ton of new releases, and this image was used as the cover of a limited edition box set and codex. Now, I consider this to be the seminal painting of the Black Templars, an image that all 40k fans from the 90s would agree is a classic. John Blanche is a concept artist and illustrator for Games Workshop, and to say he's influential is the understatement of the century. His work, as much as any other individual, has guided and inspired the more grimdark aspect of Warhammer 40k. This painting in particular stands out to me for many reasons. First of all, I'm taken in by how much detail he's packed into this painting. Not only are there tons of little details on the marines that make up the center of the composition, like this little bit of checkers on this marine's magazine, or this medusa head on this marine's knee, but there are tons and tons of other little figures in the background that I never noticed until I had the limited edition box in my hands. Look at this guy back here with the banner. Or this guy over here. Or check out these creepy grimdark characters back here. The really cool thing is how much character and individuality is coming across. Alright, I'm inspired. The next step is to get some models. There are a lot of different places and ways to get Warhammer models, and you can save a good amount of money if you know some tricks, so let's talk about this quickly. First of all, obviously you can walk into a Games Workshop store and buy them off the shelf. If you're buying Warhammer for the first time and don't know what to get, this might be the right move for you. The staff is geared towards roping in new players and they usually have a good selection of models. They do, however, tend to have high pressure sales tactics, so if you just want to browse and not be engaged with, you might prefer to go to a local game store that stocks Warhammer products. I personally like to support my local game stores whenever I can. I'd be missing some crucial advice here if I didn't mention that online retailers are often much cheaper than either of those options, sometimes by as much as 25%. I love the experience of going into a local brick and mortar store, and when you can take part in campaigns and battle nights at the local store it's a ton of fun, and I want these little hobby havens to be around in the future, so I personally purchased my new Black Templar box set from my local game store. I paid full retail price, and to be honest the box is pretty expensive for what you get already, but it does feel good to support my local gaming community. If you're looking to save even more money, buying used models is a great option. I'm constantly browsing eBay for good deals on cheap old models. If you're interested, check out the channel eBay Miniature Rescues. The host Casey specializes in hunting down and restoring old models, and it can become a really cool sub-hobby in of itself. 
Related to hunting auctions on eBay is prowling Facebook groups and Facebook Marketplace for good deals on models. I recently got a great deal on a bunch of old Space Marine vehicles, including a Land Raider, some speeders, and a drop pod. If the miniatures are covered in old paint, soaking them in isopropyl alcohol then scrubbing the paint off with a brush will really help. Check out this bad boy that I found in a lot of minis on eBay. It's an old Citadel Cleric model, from when Games Workshop made miniatures for Dungeons & Dragons. I couldn't find out exactly when this model was from, but I think it's sometime around 1985. If you ever find yourself in possession of an old model that you don't know the origin of, check out the Lost Minis Wiki or Stuff of Legends, awesome website that has a huge trove of old miniature catalogs. Remember though, old miniatures like this one are likely made out of lead, so take appropriate precautions when handling. I think this guy's robes will make him a great hanger-on type character, like these guys in the John Blanche painting. So whether he's a tech priest or a chapter surf or whatever, I'll give him a servo skull that I had lying around to bring him into the 41st millennium. This guy could be used as a servitor in-game, but I'm not too fussed about things like that. He's cool either way. One of the really cool things that can happen when people know that you like Warhammer is friends and acquaintances may sometimes approach you with their old collection and offer to sell at a great price, or even sometimes just give it to you because it has sentimental value to them and they want to see it go to a good home. I've been lucky enough to have several friends over the years do this. An awesome benefit of now running a miniature focused YouTube channel is that sometimes my viewers would reach out to me and offer to send me their old models in the hope that I'll do something cool with them and I absolutely love that. Recently I was given a very generous donation of an old Warhammer collection that included a Land Raider Crusader, some old Black Templar Marines, and a Rhino. So Clea and Matt, thank you very much. These will be perfect for my burgeoning Black Templars force. You guys will see some more of that collection in a future video as well. Now it's time to talk about the renegade methods of building a Warhammer army, which is to say, using recasts and 3D printing. Now, 3D printing Warhammer is a huge topic that I'll cover in another video. And recasts, I, uh, I don't know anything about recasts. Again, a topic for another video. So that leaves just one thing, third-party miniatures and bits. And today I'm gonna use quite a few. As you've seen, I've already acquired two Land Raiders for my army, Iconic, massive Space Marine tanks that can discharge a hefty squad of Black Templars ready to bring righteous fury upon their foes. Now there's only one problem. You cannot put the new Primaris Marines inside them. Yeah. Primaris Marines are bigger, okay, so it makes sense if they could maybe fit a few less Marines, but they can't fit at all. I just picture them like, oh, sorry, I'm too jacked to get through the door, I need a hover tank. Cringe. I've talked before about how I like the scaled up Primaris proportions. But if GW doesn't want to let me use them with my favorite tanks, then I'll have to scale up my own firstborn marines. Enter Tortuga Miniatures. Tortuga Miniatures makes bits that can be used to scale up your miniatures, and I really like a lot of their offerings. I got a selection of bodies to make some scaled up firstborn marines, and I'm really pleased with them. I use official GW heads, pauldrons, arms, and weapons, so I don't feel too bad about using third party. I think ethics wise, when you're adding to a miniature, anything goes, but the moment you start replacing something with a direct substitution, essentially causing the original creator to lose revenue, it becomes a little bit more ethically complex. In this case, I'm never going to build the legs and torsos of the firstborn marines that donated these bits, so using a third party body is not a replacement, it's just an upgrade to miniatures that I already purchased. I love making custom miniatures so nobody else will have the exact same army as me, and third party bits are a great way to do this. Beware though, some official Games Workshop tournaments have restrictions on non-GW models being used, so if that's something important to you, then be mindful of that. Now that we have a bunch of models together, let's do some painting. First, we need to talk about color scheme. Choosing a color scheme is a huge part of the success of collecting an army. Something too boring will have you pulling your hair out and leave you uninspired, but something too varied might make your force look sloppy if you aren't careful. Painting a whole army of black marines could easily be dull, but I'm going to use a very controlled palette that will actually give me the freedom to create some varied and interesting paint jobs while still keeping the whole army looking cohesive. To do this, let's take another look at that iconic John Blanche piece. Now as we've seen, John Blanche's immaculate attention to detail has managed to make an army of black armored warriors seem diverse and interesting to look at. Now the secret to accomplishing this is, in my opinion, the color palette. Blanche has decided to use the Zorn palette, which is a simple color palette named after Anders Zorn, a Swedish painter from the late 19th and early 20th century. The palette is composed of only four colors, white, ochre, vermilion, and ivory black. 
And with only these four colors, you can get a tremendous range of tones and values, but the limited color gamut means that everything seems like it's seen through sort of a sepia filter. And with the Black Templars, this palette works perfectly. It seems to imbue the landscape with sort of a hellish, fiery glow, and the lack of saturated blues and greens makes the scene seem scorched and devoid of life. The Black Templars themselves are named after a medieval knightly order, and their methods are medieval to say the least. They're puritanical, savage, and utterly intolerant of those they deem to be heretics. This color scheme perfectly accentuates their archaic black and white worldview. When choosing a color scheme for your army, it's perfectly okay to just copy the box art and use the same colors as a GW studio team, but modifying or creating your own can make your army unique and perfectly suited to your tastes. In my case, the new GW Black Templars are all painted with very blue highlights to the black armor. And as we've just been over, a saturated blue like this does not exist in the Zorn palette, so I'm using a much more desaturated grey to highlight my black armor. And when I say you can paint your models in the same colors as the box art, I mean approximately the same colors, because you don't need to use Games Workshop brand paints. Other brands like Vallejo are often much cheaper and just as good. You can also save money by using a wet palette and mixing your own colors. In my case here, I only have one grey paint, and I use a mix of that grey and black to get the dark grey from my first highlight. For painting things with complex shapes like cloth, here's a neat tip that helps you figure out where to place the highlights and shadows. Paint the surface a flat color, then put your miniature under a harsh directional light that makes the shadows and highlights pop, then snap a picture. You can then use that picture as you paint as a guide to place the highlights and shadows in a natural position. Here's another little time-saving hack for painting that might bother some of you. As you can see, I've carefully highlighted this guy's face, shoulders, and prominent leg that would catch the light but I haven't highlighted the back of him at all. I can't think of any good reason to give the back of his legs the same amount of attention as his face, so I haven't. This way you can paint more minis to a higher standard faster. If you want to come back and paint the back of his legs another day, nothing is stopping you. But for now, he looks pretty awesome and I can keep on chugging. For models that are a little bit more special, like this Marshall, you might want to fully assemble the mini until some of the trickier bits like the head are painted. I gave my marshal a custom head from a Terminator hero I had to make it unique to my army. So to make sure that I could paint all those little details, I drilled a hole in the bottom of the head and then stuck it on a bit of wire that I glued onto a bit of wooden dowel. This let me paint the head more comfortably before attaching it later. The head wouldn't fit naturally onto this body, so when I attached it, I used a bit of two-part epoxy putty to fill the gap and make it fit more naturally. To be honest, I should have sculpted the putty down into his collar area before putting the head on, but you know what? Live and learn. Even 20 some years into this hobby, I'm still trying new things, growing and improving. And that's one of the best parts about it. I used Tortuga Bay bodies for my Terminators as well. Again, using Games Workshop arms, shoulder pads and heads. Terminator is one of my favorite pieces of Games Workshop design. I love their hulking silhouette and I feel the Tortuga miniature bodies captures their imposing size and stature better. I'm going with the John Blanche color scheme on my Terminators as well, using this fellow in the Terminator armor as an example. There is no Aquila on the chest of these Tortuga Bay Terminators, so to bring in some color balance, I'm going to give them white helmets and one of them a white fist. Now the most important splash of color is this red Maltese cross on the shoulder. So for that, we're going to use a transfer. Now I have a confession. I've been kind of intimidated to use transfers until pretty much this year, and I shouldn't have been because they're really easy to use if you have the right materials. Now I'm using Microsol and Microset, which are products that I got on Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description if you want to get your own. Now you simply wet the transfer on a bit of paper towel, then apply a micro set to the surface you want the transfer on, then slide the transfer onto the surface. It's easy to slide it around for a short period of time, and the secret is this. Jab the edges with a paintbrush. The fine bristles will catch the edge and let you put it exactly where you want it. There's a few more steps to make it perfect, but that's the tricky part and the tip that I wanted to share with you guys, so let's move on. Let's talk about rules and list building for a moment. Now I love to play Warhammer, but I'll be honest, I'm not the most technically minded guy when it comes to the rules of the game. Now, sometimes reading a bunch of new wargame rules makes my eyes glaze over, and I think this is a pretty common and fairly large barrier to people starting in the hobby or starting a new army. I do find though that once you start playing it becomes much more intuitive, and if you learn by doing, you start to understand the little situations in game where certain rules apply, and it gives a sense of context to sort of hang the rules on that makes it a lot easier to remember and understand. There's kind of a catch-22 when you start collecting an army. You have to choose what equipment and loadout to build your models with, 
but you might not know what's good in the game unless you've played a bit, but you can't play until you have your models built. So my approach is to build an army of the things that I think look cool. And as I add to the army, I'll add them to a piece of list building software. I use Battlescribe. It's got all the rules baked into it in the back end, so you can just add your minis from a series of drop down lists and you can see all the rules for them in one easy place. It'll give you a sense of what's allowed and what isn't as well, so you don't accidentally build your guys with a loadout that's illegal on the table. And this is definitely not the most competitive approach to building an army, but I just straight up don't care. So a final thing that I like to do is build some terrain that goes with my army. This way when you get your force out on the tabletop, you can really imagine them doing their thing in their element. I have a ton of tutorials for different types of terrain on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed and go give those a look. For my Black Templars, I made this set of Pale Ruins as sort of a tribute to the John Blanche painting with a little stylistic nod to the ruins from the old 3rd edition box set. This video has gone pretty long, so I'm not going to go into everything I did to create this. I'll post a separate tutorial for this and put the link here when it's ready. These Black Templars are going to be a work in progress for a long time. I have a ton of other content I'm currently working on, including scratch building a gigantic Imperator Titan, which I'll have an update on for you guys very soon. And I'm sure these fellows will appear alongside some of those future projects. And that's essentially my approach to collecting Warhammer. Hopefully you guys can apply some of these tips and tricks to your own hobby to help you get the most out of it. We'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.